Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jim Zabricki and I'm a learning solution specialist with Macmillan Learning. And uh, today my plan is to show you the basics of the Sapling Learning System and to get you guys up and running as quickly as possible so that way you can get students into your courses today. Okay, so uh, before we get started, I, I want you, uh, not only am I a learning solution specialist at Macmillan, but I've also taught online and face-to-face -face classes at the community college and university level. Okay, so uh, before we get going into, into uh, Sapling today, I kind of want to give you guys a meta, uh, kind of share a story with you guys that was uh, kind of shared with me a little bit earlier ago, a couple of weeks ago, and it makes a whole lot of sense of what we're seeing now of our current new normal. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I am a terrible flyer. I know flying is safe, and I know the aerodynamics behind flying. And true story, I usually do a Google search just to see where turbulence is at in the United States anytime I'm flying anywhere. But I just get so much anxiety every time I fly because I hate turbulence. No matter how many times I hear the phrase, it's like the bumps on the road. It doesn't reassure me because the chances that a sinkhole will open up and my car falls in are slim to none. But I've noticed that my anxiety goes down a lot when the pilot comes on the intercom in advance and says, hey, it's going to be a little bit bumpy, but we're going to climb out of this and we're going to find some smoother air. Now, I'm sure that pilot hates turbulence as much as I do, but by the pilot saying that, it actually makes me feel like there was an expectation set and that we're all in this together and I can prepare myself mentally for that road ahead. And that's how I feel about this daunting task that you and me have to do with our students as we as we move our face to face classes to a fully online experience. Now, there's no way around this. It's going to be different. And the pathway to the end of the quarter or the end of the semester is maybe a pretty bumpy. But if the proper expectations are set, you will get through this. And you can think of Macmillan Learning as your flight as your flight crew. We're here to help you and we're here for your safety. Now, because it's a very short call, think of this as a uh, as a small puddle jumper. We're not gonna be uh, serving refreshments. So that's all on you guys today. But here's what I'd like to cover on our call today, on our flights, okay? So think of it this way. We're gonna, we're gonna start our takeoff. And what I'm gonna do is show you basic functionality in the sampling system. And then once we get to our cruising altitude, what I'm gonna do is show you two out of the box assignments, actually three, uh, that you can actually assign the ready to go assignable today. And that's our learning curve and reading quizzes. So that's our pre-lecture stuff. And then the homework assignments. We'll talk about these uh, in a little bit more detail. When we start our, our initial descent, what I'm gonna do is talk about how do we make a quiz or an exam inside the sampling system. And then as we prepare for landing, I'm gonna give you some things to check out and think about as you're going forward in your course. And then right when we touch down at our land at our uh, destination, I'll give you some things to, you know, some things to look at for additional help. And then I'll, what I'll do is open it up to you guys. If you guys have any questions, or, you know, we're, we're here to help. All right, so that being said, let's get started. Let's take a look at a sapling course. So what I've done today is open up a sapling course and uh, what we're looking at, this is our brand new genetics tech, uh, text, which is uh, Griffith's Introduction to Genetic Analysis. There's a lot of cool stuff inside here. So you may have a, a, what's called a sapling plus course, okay? And inside the Sapling Plus course, you'll have access to a textbook. But then as you're looking through the chapters, and you may notice that you have a bunch of different resources. Now, some of you may also have just a normal sampling course where there isn't an ebook and all you have are just homework assignments. So keep in mind, as you're looking through this, as you're going through this uh, walkthrough with me this afternoon, your course may be different from what we have than, than what I'm showing you today, okay? So all the sampling courses are gonna be slightly different from each other depending on, the, depending on your discipline and, and your specific requirements. All right, so that being said, let's take a look at the system. 
Now you may notice on your screen that you may have a bunch of links here that are gonna be in blue. You've got a link down here near the bottom that's in green. And then you've got some stuff grayed out. So anything that's blue or green right now is, is live to students. So you you know if you ever kind of wonder what what can students see versus what can I see, anything that's a blue green a blue link or a green link that's live to students right now. Anything that's grayed out is only available to you. Okay. Now one thing right off the bat that I do want to point out that some of your titles may have a link here to your instructor resources. So if you are using a Macmillan uh, specific textbook, you may have a link here in your course two instructor resources, and that would include lecture slides, images, test banks, stuff like that, okay? And again, on the right-hand side of the page over here, you do have your you do have the e-textbook where students can download that, okay? All right, and then as we're going through the course, before we get to the, chat the actual chapters themselves, I do want to point out that every sampling course, regardless of what product you're using, you're going to have this practice assignment. And I cannot stress this enough. Uh, please, please, strong, I strongly recommend assign that practice assignment. Set it for a nominal amount of points, like five points or so. But what that assignment does is that it gets students into our system, has them learn how to answer questions with, uh, you know, using drag and drop, labeling, matching, sorting, typing in numbers, uh, scientific notation, stuff like that. But what it's doing on the back end is double checking that the browser is up to date, the plugins are installed correctly. And so if you're gonna have a, you know, a heaven forbid that the technology may fail, you're gonna find out about it. Students will figure this out with that practice assignment. So again, I strongly, strongly recommend to, you know, to save you guys from some heartache, assign their practice assignment and make it work like worth like five points. Something easy, but it gets students into the system. That should solve a lot of the technology issues. Okay. All right. So that being said, let's take a look. Let's let now that we're at cruising altitude, let's actually take a look at a course. So what I'm going to do is just go down to uh, chapter two. Now you're going to notice that inside this particular course, you're going to have two areas. You're going to have an assessment area and then you're going to have resources. Okay. You're, you will always have an assessment area and inside that assessment area, you will have at least two assignments. You will have a learning curve assignment. Okay. And then you will also have a homework assignment. Now in some courses, you may also have a reading quiz activity. So let me explain how this all works. So learning curve and the reading quiz are, are our pre-lecture assignments. And homework, it's just that, post-lecture, okay? So uh, the difference between learning curve and reading quiz, learning curve is our adaptive system. And uh, because learning curve is our adaptive system, that means that you may not have full control at the question level as to what students are being asked, okay? And what I'm gonna do is take you into learning curve. We'll talk about that in a lot more detail. The reading quiz, it's also pre-lecture, does almost the same thing as learning curve. The reporting that you will get, you won't get as much reporting as you would in learning curve, but this would give you full control on the questions. So if that's a if that's a deal breaker for you, then you definitely want to check out the reading quiz. Now that being said, let's check out learning curve. Now learning curve is gonna be is gonna be particularly helpful right now for a few reasons. So learning curve is a formative a quizzing tool where questions are tagged to the different parts of a chapter and the students need to work their way through to hit the target activity score. Think of it as uh, you're completing the level in a video game, but you're just reading through an actual chapter in your textbook, okay? So let's first uh, preview this as a student. It looks like it's still loading on my end. So let me try to load this one more time. Okay, let me try going backwards. Let's go back to that home page and let's see another learning curve chapter.
I have a feeling that this might be on my end. It might be on my my internet connection. So hopefully I do not get disconnected from you guys. But as uh, as I try to get a learning curve activity loading, um, what this kind of looks like from the student side is that usually the, the lowest amount of points possible per learning curve question is about 15 points, okay? And so what's kind of cool is that, uh, you know, if I answer this question correctly in the first try, I can get all uh, I can get all 13, 15 points, but if I get if I get it incorrect, I'll get a little bit of feedback as to what's going on. But I can also if I get get it correct on the second try, I can still earn five points for getting it correct. And if I get it correct on the third try, I can still earn two points. Now here's the cool thing about learning it. Okay, there it is. So I'll tell you what. Let's let's take a look at this from the student perspective. And so here's a particular question. Now, if I try to get this, if I if I get this incorrect, okay, so again, I get that little bit of feedback, but notice that the question value went from 15 down to five points, okay? And if I try to get it right on the first try, I'm sorry, on the second try, yeah, I got the five points, okay? So I've got five points and I'm working toward this target score of 450 points. So, you know, even though I didn't, you know, I didn't really necessarily lose points because I did get five points, five points towards that, you know, towards that target score. So this is always a formative step forward, even though sometimes it may be a small step like here. But as I keep getting more and more questions correct, this target score, I'm gonna start working a little bit more towards that target score. So if I get inside this particular question, let's say I have absolutely no clue on how to answer this. The main strategy that the system's gonna use is to nudge the student to actually read the ebook page. And you'll notice that there's a bottom near the, the bottom of your page that says, read the ebook page in this topic. And so if I click on that, what that does is takes me to the page where this is being talked about in the textbook. Now, students are not penalized for reading the ebook. And in fact, you may have seen research that shows that the uh, that students' retention is up to five, three times higher when they're reading with a question in mind. So after finding that answer, they can go back and answer the question for the full amount of points. So I'm getting an error uh, refreshing. So I that's that's on me because I need to log into the vital source system. So so uh, don't worry about that one. But uh, so that's primarily why students like the learning curve system, because they don't have, as long as they don't give up, they can work their way through it. And the system is adaptive with the questions tagged by different sections and difficulty levels so that students cannot rely on knowledge from only one part of the chapter to carry them through the entire assignment. So eventually what's going to happen is that the system's going to start pushing students along so that way they are exposed to the entire chapter. Now, what I can do is go back to the study plan. So what I'm going to do is back out of this for a minute. And you'll notice, hey, I've got I've got 33% accuracy on the first on the third topic. So that's pretty cool. So this is the other reason why students like learning curve is that it gives them an individualized study plan based on how they did. And it will direct them to the sections that they were weaker in. So if I open up the section 3.1. It's gonna tell me these are the things that I need to check out in order to get my score higher. So at the very least, it's saying go back and read these sections of the text. But if we have any resources or videos or simulations or activities that could help me overcome whatever deficiency I have, they too would be listed right below. Okay, so those are really the reasons why students like Learning Curve and why it tends to be really popular. So I'm going to leave the student side for a moment, and I'm going to go back to the instructor side. So let's go back to that instructor screen. So what you, what's really cool for you, especially now that you might find assigning learning curve to be helpful, is that when students do complete learning curve activities, they tend to show up to letter, lecture better prepared to engage, whether that's a face-to-face -face class or a virtual class, or in some cases, you may be teaching asynchronous, asynchronously, okay? And another thing that you can do with Learning Curve is that it can help you take the temperature of the classroom even though you don't have your normal classroom. 
So what I'm going to do is show you, let's populate this course with some sample students. So I'm going to go down here and click on this button that says show sample students. So we can get a sense of what the reporting is going to look like. So you've got a class of five students and it looks like you've got one student here that's completed the assignment, but you've got four more going on, still working towards a target score. On the right hand side, this is how your class is performing as an aggregate. OK, so it's telling me that my students are doing really well in Section 3.2, but really, really horribly in Section 3.1. So this is an area of concern for my class. Now, what's really cool is that you can go back to your students and actually click on a student. So let's let's see how Marie Curie's doing. By clicking on Marie Curie, you can actually see how this is breaking down for that for an individual student. And knowing how they did broken down by section is going to be really helpful when students are emailing you or if you are holding virtual office hours. So all that being said, all that being said, learning curve is going to be your most thorough and easiest to assign out of the box activity in Sapling. Okay, so that is primarily the, the, the learning curve system. Now, there is one slight downside to Learning Curve, and here it is. Because Learning Curve is an adaptive system, you won't have absolute control as to which question is being asked when. The moment, and, that's, and the reason for that is that the moment that you start specifying that in Learning Curve, you start to lose the reliability of the reports, both for the students and the instructors. Okay. Now, if you do want that absolute control, that's where that's where this reading quiz comes in. Okay, and the reading quizzes are between five to twenty questions long. They're all multiple choice. The questions are low level reading comprehension questions, just like Learning Curve. But the reading questions, the reading quizzes, will just give you absolute control if you need that. The reporting that you would get on the reading quiz is not as robust as what you would get from the students and from the instructors inside Learning Curve. But that being said, if you need uh, if you need absolute control on questions, that's where the reading quiz comes in. Okay, so you've got learning curve, and in some cases you've got a reading quiz as well. Now let's check out the homework assignment because this is really where the heart of the material really lies. So for every assignment, what well, for every chapter, we're going to have a built-out assignment for you. And so here's how this assignment looks from the instructor perspective. So you can see that every question is arranged as a line on a table or a row on a table. The biggest column on this table actually is the one that doesn't have a, have a label here. And we call that the title and description column. Okay, this is going to give you a really good sense of the question before you see it yourself. And so if we take a look at uh, line number one here, it says, Law of independent assortment, use a diagram to identify true statements about the law of independent assortment, and this is appropriate for majors and non-majors. Okay, so you have a good sense of the question before you see it yourself. Now, if I go one column over to the right, I get to see what level of Bloom's taxonomy this question falls into, and this question hasn't been tagged yet. Okay, but you can see as you're going through the rest of the assignment that I'll, you're going to have a lot of threes and fours. And that's that's good because we try to make sure that the homework assignment is going to push students a little bit further. So we want them, here's the point where we're trying to get them to meet a learning objective in the text and start making connections between topics. Okay, so you've got uh, Bloom's level. And then if I go two columns over to the right this time, you're going to see a column that says question type. So this is going to tell you the method that students are going to use to answer the question. So not only do you, before you see the question, you have a pretty good sense of what the question is asking, but you also know the method that the question is going to be asked to students. So this is going to be a multiple select question. Now, if I go back to that title and description column and go one column over to the left this time, you actually have a clickable image. And what I'm going to do is click on that image. This is going to give us a pop-up of the question that's going to be asked to students. So now we can see the question ourselves, okay? And because we're in instructor mode, we get to see the, the solution by default, okay? Now, every homework question inside the sampling system is going to have three things in common with each other. The first, well, I'll tell you what, let me show you, uh, let me show you this. 
So in the upper right hand corner of the question screen, we have this toggle switch that says show feedback. I'm gonna turn that on. And by doing that, here's the first thing that each question will have. Each question will have a detailed solution for each and every question. And what's really cool about this is that the content team writes these solutions from the point of view of, let's say you had absolutely no clue on how to answer this question, at least by reading the solution, you're gonna gain an appreciation of where this question is coming from. So if you had to answer this again going forward, you'd have a better shot of getting this correct, okay? And as the instructor, you do have the choice of when you wanna turn the solution on. So by default, students get to see the solution when they complete, when students complete or give up on a question, but you can change that if you want. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, what I'm gonna do is go to the upper left-hand corner this time, and there's a tab here that says question view. Let me click on that. And so here's the second thing that each question will have. Each question will have a detailed hint per question. Now, some systems will have a, will provide hints, but you may get a couple extra credit points if you don't use the hint, or if you do open the hint and there might be a question in there that you're forced to answer now. If you get that question incorrect, you might lose points towards your overall score. What we try to do with sampling is to keep things simple. What we're trying to do is make sure, you know, the hint is there for the students, you don't have to use it. You don't, you know, you're not forced to use it, but if you need that help, we've got it built into that question, okay? So that's the second thing that each question will have in common. You'll have that detailed hint. And then finally, I'm gonna go back to the left-hand side of the screen. There's a tab here that says incorrect feedback. And if I click on that, you'll see for this particular question, there's seven incorrect feedbacks that have been programmed. And so students are gonna get detailed feedback based on what they're putting into the system, okay? So those are the three homework features of Sapling, that there's feedback, direct feedback, based on what students are putting into the system. There's gonna be at least one hint per question. And then there's gonna be a detailed solution for each and every question. And like I said, all homework questions will have that, okay? So that's so that's how you would get to see where the you know how questions look in a particular homework assignment. And like I said, th this homework assignment you'll have one per chapter. These are going to be curated for you. Now, because you're doing everything as quickly as possible and you want to get things out the door, uh, best practice that I would strongly recommend at this at this point is that you may want to use the homework assignments as it and us get those live to students. Okay. Or you could use the homework assignment as a scaffold. So that way you build it, you use this assignment as a scaffold and what you do is, is add more questions or you move questions, get the homework assignment to the point where you're happy with it. So that's actually the next question. Where are more homework questions to choose from? And now you'll notice at the top center of your screen, you're gonna have a series of tabs over here. And what I'm gonna do is click on that second tab that says question bank. Let's take a look at that, okay? Now on the left-hand side of the screen, you're gonna have, a, you're gonna see what folders or books are available to you. And right now at the top, we're working from the Griffiths folder where there's currently 477 questions in there, okay? Now what's really cool is that if we open this folder up, it's actually gonna be broken down into chapters and so if we go into chapter three, you'll see that there's 25 questions here. Now, if I open up that chapter folder, now that everything is broken down into sections, and then if I open up a section folder, then it's gonna be broken down into either learning objectives or subtopics. So for instance, let's say I wanted to see the, you know, questions that use the chi-square analysis in genetics. So let's click on that. And so now here are those three questions that hit that particular learning objective. Okay, so if I want to get a, if I want to get a look at this question again, I would just click on that image of the question so that way I see the question live. Okay, and if I think that this is a pretty nice question, this is a fair question to ask my students. The way I would add this to the assignment is that I would go back uh, and I would click on the check mark box next to each question line. And when I do that, a pop-up menu appears up at the top. 
So it tells me that I've got one question selected and I've got two choices. Either I could add questions directly to the assignment or I could create a question pool. And what a question pool means is that, let's say I wanna add all three questions to this, but I only want students to answer like two of those three questions. So what the system would do is randomly choose which two of these questions students would get for, for the assignment, okay? So what I'm gonna, and you may wanna think, you know, when we start thinking about tests and quizzes, you may wanna consider using some pooling. Now for the homework assignment, because we wanna get this up and running as fast as possible, what I'm gonna do is click the add button. And so I'm gonna be told, yep, one item has been added. And you'll notice that the assessment number went from 20 to 21. So let's go check out the assessment tab. Let's see what's going on over here. Now, if I go all the way to the bottom of the homework assignment, question 21 at the bottom is that question that I just added. All right. So at this point, I've got a few more choices. So what I'm gonna do is click on the check mark box next to that question. And by doing that, you'll notice I get that pop-up menu again at the top, but this time, instead of having the add button, I've got remove, okay? I still have the ability to make a pool if I want to, and I can also reorder the assignment. So let's say I don't want this question at the bottom. I want, I want students to answer this question probably right after question 17, so I can move questions around if I want to. Okay, but let's say after I start building out the homework, I realize, you know what, this question doesn't fit anymore. So what I'm going to do is go to question 18, and I'm going to click on that check mark box. What I'm going to do is remove that question. Now, even though this this home this uh, course is not live to students, I'm still getting a warning. Am I sure that I want to remove this question? Because if you remove it, any data on that question, students' grades will be affected. Okay. So I'm gonna confirm, remove item. Now this is really important. I just removed that question from the assignment, but if I go over here to the question bank, that question is still here at the top. So this is really important. Even though you remove a question from an assessment, you do not remove it from the question bank. So you can't touch the question bank. So that's really nice. All right, so, the next question, how do we get a homework assignment live to students? Well, this is actually a three-step process and we just got step one done. We choose the questions, get, uh, get the questions in the order that we want things assigned and we're good to go. So that's step one. Now step two is to choose the grading policy for this assignment. So in order to do that from the assessment screen, what I'm gonna do is go to the upper right-hand corner and you're gonna see a bo box here that says grading settings. So what I'm gonna do is click on grading settings. And so here's where we're gonna choose the grading policies for the homework assignment. Now by default, everything in sampling is gonna be using the homework policy. And what that means is that you're gonna have unlimited attempts in the questions. You'll have a 5% penalty per wrong attempt. Students get to see the solution upon question completion. And then they get to see resources like the ebook, data sets, simulations, stuff like that. Okay. Now, that being said, you are not married to this grading policy. So if you want to go with something completely different, absolutely have at it. So to make your own custom template, what you would do is go down below and click on the create new button. Okay. And now you would be able to create your own custom template and then choose the settings that you want for your homework assignment. So if you didn't want students to have unlimited attempts, but you wanted them to have five attempts, you'd uncheck that button and then set how many attempts that they get, okay? So what's really nice is that once you create your own custom template, they actually stay in your account for, for pretty much the length of time that you have your account. So what you're looking at down below, these are three grading policies that I've used in different courses. So this is actually really nice. Once you make a grading policy, they stay with you forever. Now, the other cool thing that I wanna point out is that there's also a test quiz policy as well. So you can use a test quiz policy if you are making a, a quiz or a test. So what I would recommend is to create your policy one time, the, fir the first time you're making a homework assignment. And then that way, uh, all you have to do is every time you make it, you're ready for a new assignment to go live, you choose the right grading policy that's gonna work for you. And so that way, step two is pretty easy for you guys going forward.
So that's your second poly, that's your second step in the three step process. Make a grade, make a homework assignment, choose the grading policy, and now the last step is that we assign that homework assignment. So what I'm going to do to do that, I'm going to go back to the home page. So I'm going to click on this link that says Zabricki Sapling Plus. That takes us back to the home screen. Okay. To get an assignment live to students, what I'm going to do is now on the left hand side, there's a series of buttons that goes down the page. I'm going to click on this first button that says activities and due dates. Okay. And by doing that, that's going to take you to our bulk due date updater. So at this point, you can actually find that assignment. And here it is, chapter three. And what I'm going to do is just move across the screen. So the first drop down menu is actually the grading policy. So if you forgot to do step two, you can still do it from the screen, which is really, really nice. Okay. So I'm going to say, let's make that homework policy, homework assignment. Let's keep that in the homework. The next step is that you would choose the amount of points for this homework assignment. Now, everything is out of 100 points. I'm going to set it for 20. Now, what's really nice is that on this page, anytime you make a change, it automatically saves it for you. So that makes it really nice. The next column is the grade category. If you were going to use Sapling's gradebook function and you wanted to organize your homework assignments by, top, by category, you can absolutely do that if you want to. And then the next two columns, this is where you make it available. You choose the date and time that the homework assignment is going to go live. So let's make it do, uh, let's make it go live on April 3rd, today at, at 11.55 p.m. And the next column is when it's due. Let's make it due tomorrow night at 11.55 p.m. Okay. And then the last two columns, offsets and extensions. Offsets, let's say you're giving an exam and you need to give someone, instead of giving them uh, 60 minutes, you got to give them time and a half. You can choose to do that. You can actually set that up in offsets. Extensions, if you got to give someone an extension that are a homework assignment and need to give them a couple more days or a couple hours, you can click on extensions and, and choose the choose your settings as you want. All right, and so if it, at this point, if I go back to that home screen, all right, now it says we've got an assignment live. It says chapter three homework will be available at April 3rd at 11.55 p.m. That's due on April 4th. There we go, so we got an assignment live. All right, so that being said, remember, you're gonna have two, you're gonna have two, at least two assignments per chapter. You're gonna have a learning curve activity, and then you're gonna have a homework assignment and what we would recommend is that you would use learning curve to get students that foundation to understanding the material in tandem with the homework assignment so that way they're dealing they're 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 really developing their critical thinking skills okay so that being said let's now start our our initial descent so that was uh what happens if you got to make a quiz or an exam inside sapling here's the good news for you because we just made a homework assignment, it's almost the same exact process as making a homework assignment. So let me show you how this works. The only difference is we've got to create an activity from scratch. So I'm going to go back to the chapter three box, and you're going to notice for each box or each section, you're going to have two drop down menus. What I'm going to do is click on the first one that says add an activity, and then right at the top, you're going to have this box. Uh, you're going to, your first choice is assessment. So let's click on that. So here's where you're going to give your assessment a name. So let's call this exam two. Okay. And what I do is uh, personally, when I'm making an exam in sampling, I skip everything else for right now. Okay. So I'm going to skip down and you're going to have three buttons at the end of the page. What I'm going to do is click save and continue. So that allows us to keep building your assignment. Now, what we just skipped over was the amount of points, when does it do, stuff like that. We'll set that in step three. But it takes you, if you notice now, this is just like what the homework screen looked like. The only difference is we have no questions in here and we need to start by building some questions out. So you would go back into the question bank, search the question banks and start adding questions. So that's really nice. A building an exam or a quiz in sampling is just like building a homework assignment from scratch. The only difference is you would have to create the assignment from scratch. And then instead of using the homework grading policy, you'd use test, quiz, or create your own brand new policy.
All right, so here's another thing to think about. Your school or your dean or your chair might be saying to you that you may have to use a lockdown browser inside your campus LMS in order to give exams. And if that's the case, if you are if you are in that kind of a situation, unfortunately, you won't be able to use Sapling for your exams, but we do have a workaround for you. What you could do is access the Macmillan Learning Test Bank from the catalog page. And what you would do is create your own exam using those test bank questions. And then you would export your exam as a, as a zip file. And you can upload that zip file right into your campus LMS software. Okay, so if you are forced to use a lockdown browser, we do have a workaround for you. So that's pretty awesome. All right, so that being said, it's time for our, our final descent. So let's make sure we put our trays away and we can start cleaning up the cabin. So let me let me show you some other things in sampling to think about and, and you know while you're while you're building up your course. So one other thing, uh, one thing to show you is that you're gonna have um, and if we go back to the left hand side of the screen, fourth button down is your grades, is your grade book. So what I'm gonna do is click on that. Okay, so you do have access to a grade book in Sapling. You do have, um, you have very basic functionality inside Sapling. If you need to export your grade book from Sapling into Excel, what you would do is click on the export tab here. Okay, and then you would choose which assignments you want to bring over into Excel. What I usually do is bring everything over and then you would click the preview button. So that's going to show you what the what the grade book's going to look like, and then you can click download. So exporting your grade book into Excel, pretty pretty straightforward. Okay. The other thing I would I would also point out to you is that every course is going to be different. So every course is going to have different resources. And so what I would what I would recommend is to see what also is available to you. So you can see that there's animation activities problem solving videos, nature articles, tutorials, interactives. So each course is gonna be completely different. So please check them out. Don't be afraid to use something or make it visible for students to check out on their own. Okay. So that being said, we are finally landing. So let's, let's talk about next steps. So eventually what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get a follow-up email probably this afternoon uh, in a couple hours that's gonna have a copy of this recording. It's also gonna have a link to contact your rep if you still need to set up, at, set up access to a sampling course. It's also gonna give you a link to sign up for a personalized one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one session with a discipline specialist. So if you wanna dig into your textbook and see what's really available, you'll, we can make that happen. And then also we're gonna have a, a link to additional support materials as well as a link to our knowledge base. And I can't stress this enough, that knowledge base is gonna have a lot of information in there. So if you ever have any questions, uh, you know, check that out first because a lot, there's a lot of cool stuff in that knowledge base. Now that being said, what I'm gonna do is open it up to you guys. If you guys have any questions, there should be a questions tab down below and the go to webinar screen. Type in your questions and, and uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm here to help. We seem to have gotten one in chat, Jim. Okay, so uh, the question is, what would a typical week, uh, typical week's worth of work look like for the most experienced users? That's a really awesome question. So let me let me back out of this for for a second. Let's go back to let's, let's go back to sampling. What a typical work week would look like is that you would want to assign learning curve, okay, as well as a homework assignment. That would be that would be enough for, for a student. Now, that being said, every course is different, every instructor is different, but I, that's what we would recommend, that you would use learning curve and a homework. And I'll be honest, that's, that's what I've done in the past. If you're covering a chapter a week, that's, that's about right. That, that should, the homework and the learning curve should take you about two to three hours, depending on what you're doing. Learning curve should take you at least a half hour to 45 minutes, depending on the chapter. Okay, uh, let's see if any questions have come through. Oh, here's a question. 
is there an option for group assignment in Sapling? Uh, yes, there is an option for group assignment. Absolutely. So um, that, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, it, you can do it. What I'll do is send you, uh, Kirsten, I'll send you directions on how to set that up. But absolutely, you can do that. And we've had instructors that actually do that, especially with large lecture, lecture courses. Any other questions? Give it a minute, but I think that may be it. But let's give folks a second to chime in if they'd like. Ooh, here's another one. Uh, Maggie asks, do we have the option to assign different point values to questions in the test? So in the sapling system, you do have the ability to weigh questions. So if you wanted to, you know, by default, everything has a weight of one, but if you wanted to weigh questions a little bit more, you do have that ability. It uh, tends to be a little bit more complicated, uh, but, Maggie, what I'll do is send you directions on the, to that help page after this. So that way you got you you have access to that. No, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Maggie. Any other questions? Um I created a test. Okay. I, I think that may have been connected to that last part. All right. Yeah, I'll send you directions on how to do that. I think that may be it, Jim, and I've got some background noise. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And if you have any questions, you know, definitely contact your rep, contact your specialist, contact the, the client success team. We are all here to help you. We are going to get you through this. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. Have a great weekend. You too. Have a good weekend.